that you do. Um, you, there's a great quote in the Nanjing that the superior physician treats the, the diseases of society. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Okay, some people might take it in a more political sense. I take it is that the that there are issues in humanity in different cultures that have come down. History. If you do a historical study of medicine, which is fascinating, medical anthropology, you see that different eras had different challenges to human life. Many of them were environmental, many of them were the result of war, disease, famine, poverty. Many of them were the result of uh, epidemics that swept through cultures, like the famous book by Jared Diamond, Guns, Diseases, I forgot the title, but it's, it's an incredible history of humankind from the perspective how epidemics wiped out entire cultures, mm -hmm. and how, how that advanced medicine and so forth. So having a broad view of that are in a particular society. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people think that, you know, this interest in Chinese medicine is a bit of a throwback or sentimental, mm -hmm. but really the principles that allow you to look at the society in which you live and the environment in which you live and respond to it in a very intelligent way, mm -hmm. rather than in a very fixed, rigid way. And as you know, we have patients with some very unusual, perplexing issues coming in now, and there's a number of reasons for it. Some of them are the loss of the internal microflora in the, in the gut and the system, overuse of medications, the incredible emotional stress, and to me, one of the main factors is the incredible anti-intuitive living that people have. <laughs> and as, a, as former students, we all know you have to be at school at your mm -hmm. desk at a certain time. Meanwhile, you're not even woken up yet. And they've done studies at you know high schools that shows that the average teenager's cognitive functions don't really kick until 10 a.m., but they're in school at 8 a.m. The first two hours are wasted. Mm -hmm. And how that affects digestive bowel function, when to be active, when not to be active, Everything's counterintuitive. Most people's jobs work against nature. Mm -hmm. A woman's cycle, she should be more active at certain times of the month, less active at other times of the month. All these things impact health. Mm -hmm. So as the, Confu the Confucianist philosophical of Chinese culture 2,000 years ago taught people how to live a healthy life, um, our society seems to impose a very non-healthy regimen mm -hmm. on people in the working uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So, scholastic environment. Mm -hmm. None worse than the medical profession, where you're forced to work 36-hour shifts, be right. up all night, and they've been finding that the amount of medical accidents and mistakes as a result of these is very high. Mm -hmm. You know, and many doctors really get beaten up in medical school. Is that really the right message we want to give aspiring physicians and nurses that you have to sacrifice your health in order to take care of other people's health? Yeah, it's, it's absurd. It's interesting. <laughs> I actually found one of the sources of that. Um, one of the teachers of Western medicine in the 19th century was William Osler, who actually had an lecture very early on. He was one of the first Western doctors to be interested. And on one hand, he said that a student of medicine needs a broad liberal arts education, philosophy, the arts, read novels, you have a really developed mind, mm -hmm. and also, of course, heart. And he also said that physicians should sacrifice their health for their patients. So that's where from. Unfortunately, that idea survived. Right. The <laughs> idea <laughs> of, the, of the broad education mm -hmm. did not. Wow. And I it's even impacting our profession mm -hmm. in Chinese medicine. Yes. Because medicine is culture. It's not just it's not just science. Mm -hmm. It is an art and it's culture. Yes. You know, that's the thing. That's true. So I think that's how I see that little quote. And I've thought about it many times. I've read the Nanjin 25 times already. Uh -huh. And I you know I'm doing a seminar yes. on a yes. study next month. So yeah. I'm going to go through the whole book mm -hmm. again with students. But there was a, a great quote, uh, you don't mind me going on my phone here for a second, off no, of your, um, it was off of your blog, which is also amazing. Um, oh, thank you. It's going to be a full website soon. Oh, good. Zedrosenberg.com. I have someone working on it. Now. Oh, wonderful. Um, this was actually sent to you by Sabina Wilms, who is a, a wonderful yeah. translator of 
of Chinese medicine texts. Um, and it says here that uh, from it was from Sun Simiao's uh, chapter. Beautifully pronounced. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it says the reason why the methods in the classics are difficult to grasp in their essence is that they come from such a lofty origin. Only those who apply their heart with sublime subtlety can even begin to talk about this. In all cases, when you treat disease as an eminent physician, you must quiet your shen, fix your attention, you must be free of wants and desires, and you must be full of great compassion, and you must sentient beings indiscriminately from their suffering. Beautiful. Yeah. So going back to this, how do we, in our culture, practice that way? Well, China is a lot about self-cultivation, not for just ourselves, but the people we work with. And again, we're not trying to force a lifestyle or religion or anything on people, but we do have to let them know if they're self-perpetuating their that it can be helped. You know, instead of advocating people for things like anxiety, work through the knots that are causing the anxiety and how people can open up to it. Yeah. And that's just an example of many. But the physician definitely has to have self-cultivation because we have to activity because we're not relying on instruments like EKGs and mm -hmm. blood tests. We're relying on what we see, what we hear, what we feel, what we palpate. All that is where we get it. We own our vision is where we get our diagnostic information. Mm -hmm. That's the hallmark. That's what differentiates natural medicine from modern biomedicine or technological medicine. Mm -hmm. Not that it's good or bad. But the technological medicine is so ubiquitous in our society that it's almost in our own profession. A lot of people believe in what they're doing because they're trying to get the technological medicine rather than take the medicine that we have with its benefits and its limitations and mm -hmm. use it as it is. Right. You know? So how do you I know that we've talked before about there's this push um, that I have felt professionally and I'm sure to become more to Western medicine, and what do you think is the compromise? Is there a compromise? Or... I, don't, I don't think there is any reason for compromise. What got us here in the mm -hmm. and from demand within society, you know, going back for you know, 40 years, as I started in my teens getting interested from the East, um, it was a desire of people to live more naturally and to have more natural cure. Right, and even in terms of Western medicine, I mean, when I was a little kid, the doctor made house calls, and he, my the physician who I grew up with, I saw him all the way up to my teens. You went to his, mm -hmm. like I, like my, you know, he highly lived downstairs was his office. You know, it was a, it was much more decentralized than it is now. Some of it is again, as we're speaking about the diseases of society. One of the diseases, of this over of everything, you know, big, 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 right? So I think one of the things that draws people to Chinese and other alternative forms of medicine, medicine, confused techniques, right? Beautiful techniques, but it's part of Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and has the theoretical foundations of the medicine under it, just like the just like the qigong, just like many of the other aspects, dietetics. That's Chinese medicine. Yeah. It's a system based on a philosophy that's 2,000 years old. The other medicines in that class are things like Ayurveda and Tibetan medicine and the various variants of it, or Greek or Arabic, which preceded medicine. They were complete medical systems. They weren't just one technique. Mm -hmm. So if we look at acupuncture, I never looked at of licensed acupuncture mm -hmm. because we do a that's yes. number one. And that's not to say if someone specializes in acupuncture, if you get deep into the classical practice, you can do incredible things, treat internal diseases. And the, the Nei Jing is an incredible complex study. And the, what they saw about the human body in terms of channel pathways was just amazing. So it's we go with of our own medicine. We communicate with other health professionals. The system would be pretty, pretty low in the totem pole. We wouldn't be mm -hmm. up there with Western doctors. With maybe physical therapists or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, working under the tutelage and doing what they tell. Them. I mean, I don't know how much independence. Or I realize there's a number of possible roles, but even then, I have nothing against working with Western physicians or other physicians. I do. I'm an advisor to an integrative 
medicine program at UCSC. But the physicians I work with agree with they want to see whole systems mm -hmm. medicine, not just, oh, take a little piece and westernize it, do it justice, right. you know. And I think we've been too quick to try to neurological puncture. I think neuroscience is but it's a young science, mm -hmm. and we just try to pin no pin Chinese mm -hmm. medicine down mm -hmm. the neuroscientific view of it. It's going to be big mistakes, and it's not going to be accurate. It's going to be it. I think Chinese medicine is faster than your model, mm -hmm. or a pharmacological model of herbs. They're never going to be able to recreate the system of combining the herbs together that has been perfected over literally 2,000 years. You know? So that's the problem. Mm -hmm. If you put the cart before the horse, let Chinese medicine, which does an independent profession here first, then the interactions will make much more sense. Mm -hmm. you know. And then I'm all supportive of it. Mm -hmm. But right now, I, it's like, I always use the child bride metaphor. Mm -hmm. the, the bride is still too young to go to the altar. That's a great way to put it. You yes. know? Uh -huh. And also by over-educating us in Western medicine, under-educating us in Chinese medicine, defeats the whole purpose. Yes. So I realize it's a value judgment, but it's okay. I make a value judgment. Well, I, I think for myself, my personal experience mm -hmm. when I went to acupuncture school, mm -hmm. the master's program, I interest in Chinese medicine. I already had a Western background. Ah. You already grew up. Mm -hmm. You know the medical trust exactly. in a different. You have to change. You have to think. That's the whole. I tried to get this across. Very few people get this. It's a way of thinking. It's a logical system, and you have. to Possibly be practicing it mm -hmm. to get it, yes. you know. So otherwise, you just fall back into society's regular mode, and that's it's easy. the problem. Yeah, it's easier, but it also does immune diseases as well. Yes. Yeah. So how does how does Chinese medicine view autoimmune disease? Okay, everything is you know in Chinese medicine starts with simple theories such as yin yang days, and there's a progression from a simple state of disease to a more complex. And catch it in an early stage. The Nanjing talks a lot about this. If you catch it early, okay, stage one, stage two, boom, stopped. Even in Western medicine, we know this. With certain cancers, if you detect them early, eliminate them. Sometimes that'll be the end of the disease. Catch it later on down the road, it becomes more complex. And in the Shang Han Lun, the herbal classic, you have six channel progressions of disease from the most exterior to the most interior, and the most interior is the most difficult to treat, and the form is get very complex, and the diagnostics are very complex. People who had been raised in a culture where the body was less so now, but it was used like a machine. Mm -hmm. And you just, bam, bam, you got a Mack truck, drive it up and down the hills, bam, <laughs> bam, over the rock stuff, whoops, I just sprung a leak in my tank. <laughs> Bring your truck in, they fix your gas tank, or give you another one. I think that's how a lot of people view the human body. And to some degree, the mind, it's like, all of a sudden, here I am, <laughs> I've got stomach ulcers. Right? You've been like, this at your desk for years, answering phone calls, trying to sell and use cars for years, and all of a sudden, ah, you know? That's, where did that come from? People sometimes don't have any awareness. It's the work they're doing, the lifestyle that's doing it, and by the time they deal with it, it's a full-blown disease. So autoimmune is even like the body intelligence, if we want to call it, scrambled. Right. It's like the body itself goes crazy or insane in response to changing conditions, you know. So, and that could be a very complex topic. One aspect of that topic is the microbiome and the macrobiome, the fact that the natural bacterial population of our bodies, which modern science is now discovering, if it gets disturbed, it can create all types of problems in the system. That's why overuse of Western medications such as antibiotics and steroidal drugs can really mess with that and create all kinds of chronic problems. Mm -hmm. Also emotional upheavals can do it. We, I've seen several patients with what has been called you know, bipolar syndrome or in a physiological level lupus erythematosus as the result of really traumatic family life. Mm -hmm. Total rejection by parents, um, really, you know, heavy emotional stuff can snap the body as well as the mind, you know. So, but it's it's a very deep topic, and autoimmune diseases require long-term commitment, lifestyle change. 
the more complex and the more deep rooted condition, the more you have to live in a way that prevents that disease from taking off. So, you know, everything has changed mm -hmm. in the person. So what advice would you give the average person who lives in a frenetic world um, to start taking care of themselves before a problem starts, starts to develop? The, one of the most important distinguishing factors about Chinese medicine to me is time. Mm -hmm. It's a medicine that's aware of time. There have been some aspects of Western medicine as well. There's a, there's a small science which hasn't caught any of chronology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's, there have been many studies that show that if you give a medication a day, it'll be much more effective than another. It depends on the body's own levels of neurotransmitters, hormones, et cetera, et cetera. Ebb and flows cycle, that we have daily cycles, we have 24-hour cycles, we have seasonal cycles, we have monthly cycles, we have yearly cycles, and even larger macrocosmic cycles at work. We have millions of circadian rhythm clocks inside the body. And just as acupuncture specifically tries to harmonize channels, so are balanced and that the channels are flowing together, each at their normal speed, and each channel has a speed to it. Then when you harmonize these internal clocks, the body heals itself, mm -hmm. right? So there are many disruptors that we are subject to in the environment. Uh, uh, GM, the mm -hmm. various letters that created mm -hmm. for us, you know, pesticides, noise levels, there are many different stressors, jet lag, flying, jetting between zones, climate, into the opposite season, mm -hmm. you know, all these things are disrupting human beings in ways we haven't seen before, right. so these are big challenges for us, and I think that's, again, I think most people are intuitive, it's why they're if we attracted what we're doing. And that's one reason to do it. Never put on when I graduated <laughs> acupuncture school. Okay. It's a ritual thing. I don't see any authority given to me by wearing a white coat with a stick in my neck, you know, with little letters on it. Sorry. Uh, it's I feel more relaxed. A lot of people are actually quite traumatized by medical offices. So try to keep the lights mellow and give a homey feel. I'm a country doctor is what yes, I am, you know. Yes. So. And I felt very well. Thank you, so. thank you. We tried. To... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about the um, one of the immune, all the autoimmune diseases mm -hmm. that are coming up. Is this kind of um, the microorganisms are out of black in our own bodies and in the um, environment as well? So what is there anything? Well, that... well yeah. That's a big issue. Yeah. Um, is there anything that the average person can do that you would advise? to do in terms of their diet um, that can start to, to counteract that? As organic, natural, and local as possible. Okay. That's the first thing. Now, the, I mean, I've seen so many diet fads come up since. I know. It's, it's like unbelievable. I started studying with a teacher of macrobiotics when I was 16, 17, and that's basically how I've practice. You know, my knowledge base expanded a lot through Chinese medicine. That's where macrobiotics came from. But, you know, whole grains, vegetables, what uh, they say is called a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. And some fish, I do eat some fish, some egg. That's the, those are the only animal proteins I tend to eat. And, but again, I know my body and different people have different body types. And, you know, in Ayurveda, you have the different doshas, pitta, kapha, vata. And that's a good system for diet. Um, but when you come into this, that no fat at all, no cooked food right. at all, or no grains at all, that's mm -hmm. the newest fat. Now. Oh, well, I have to say, my, my belief on that is that people want to suffer. They, we've gotten, we've gotten yeah. away from religion, mm -hmm. and so now people... Purification. They have to find a way to, to you know, hurt Plant. themselves, right? Mm -hmm. You know, to, to be guilty, to be, you know, have sin and have all these things. So what can you do? It's like you make food into that. Mm -hmm. And it also becomes this kind of... Um, group like you become part of a group that doesn't right. eat grains or doesn't eat whatever and right. so it's, it's kind of replacing religion i think for one of those well things. macrobiotics except we're like that as well there's oh, really? a whole community in boston and people ate ridiculously strict and there was this one house and all the people started breaking out in skin sores that went in okay 
because they weren't getting any vitamin C. They weren't eating any fruit. Oh, wow. Right? And all the women in the house stopped having their periods and their hips and size decrease. They started, you know, losing their female characteristics. Mm -hmm. They were not getting any oils or fats. Mm -hmm. they, they were not using any oil in the cooking. Yes, even there you saw some craziness. But uh, I think it is we're so far from our natural Another reason that Chinese medicine is difficult for many people to understand because it was came it came from a culture, the pre modern culture before um, the Industrial Revolution, everyone lived in nature right. pretty much. Right. And the metaphor of the pulse, horses running to and fro by a stream. Everything <laughs> was about sun and hill and stream and canyon and mountain and that's what people lived with the type of natural wisdom, including mm -hmm. food. Yes. You didn't think of, well, what are you going to eliminate to try to pretend I eat like the caveman did millennia ago, you know? I mean, there are people in New York who <laughs> run a bridge and all around the city barefoot. Oh, really? Yeah. And wow. they only eat raw meat. Wow. And they sleep for 36 hours at a time. They, you know, they, what kind of and they drink they big things of water, <laughs> Eat like what they consider to be our ancestors. Wow. That's like the original paleo. Wow. Hardcore. I yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's hardcore. Not at all. Right? <laughs> so, you, and you see how the pub, it's, a, it's, it's very faddish. I hate to say it. Someone got very upset with me on Facebook because I said that this new book, Grain Brain, is when I saw it in the yes. store. Oh, I know. I, the yeah. 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 I mean, like, he seems like a nice guy and all, but he has MDFs <laughs> after his. That grains are evil. I mean, most of humanity whole grains for thousands of years, and I don't see any evidence of brain damage. <laughs> maybe there is. Maybe everyone is brain damaged. God forbid. But uh, you know, it's just so absurd in a way to me. And I've read the book. I mean, yes, I did read the book, and to hold myself back from heaving, but I did read it. <laughs> you know, in the bookstore, I didn't. Buy it. <laughs> I went down to Barnes and Noble and read it. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe my eyes, right? Because I've eaten whole grains every day for the last 40 years. Uh -huh. huh? So I, I still have my brain. I hope so. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone senile yet, God. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you see this, and in our field, like, the word integrative is mm -hmm. another example. It's like, it's a good idea. Where do you understand it? No one's ever defined it. Yeah. It means different things to different people. It has political consequences. It has a socioeconomic aspect. But where I'm totally opposed to it is in theoretical. Mm -hmm. Keep the Chinese medicine theory and understanding of the human body separate from the Western. Mm -hmm. Where you see overlaps, interesting, good, fine. You're all the same human entity. But don't mix up the theories because, what's, as you pointed out earlier, people are going to end up basically with the biomedical understanding all over again with a little on top. Mm -hmm. They're not going to end up with a different medical system. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want everything to be Western medicine all over again. That's boring. It happened to the osteopaths. They started a really independent way of looking at a human being. Mm -hmm. And there's still some people like who practice craving or upledger students who have a very unique view of the body, which is very valuable, and you get them to a very powerful effect. But then you have other osteopaths who are just basically physicians who prescribe drugs for musculoskeletal disorders, yeah. you know? Yeah. Is that the price we're going to have to pay? Can't yeah. pay the price. Yeah.